hi guys welcome to the lesson of partial differential equations so we were discussing first order differential partial differential equations and we discussed the journal forms journal integrals integral curves and uh, non-linear partial differential equations for cauchy characteristic method linear semi-linear and quasi-linear uh, and uh, we also use charpitz method and jacobi's method in our previous lectures for solving nonlinear equations. So uh, today we will uh, learn some specific type of differential equations, uh, say nonlinear differential equations that can be solved uh, directly by some substitution method. So we do don't have to solve it for uh, like uh, any method of uh, Charpitz or Jacobi's or Cauchy's, just we have to substitute uh, some forms uh, of uh, P and Q, and then we will get the answer directly by integration. So let's talk about uh, uh, some types. So we have, uh, we have four types generally, four types in general. So we'll uh, discuss four types and we will discuss how to solve them, how to substitute. So let's talk about type one. So in type one, we can say that if you are given a function of P and Q only, it means that there is no X, Y, and Z. We only have a function of P and Q. So then, we can say that P is equals to A, then Q will be equals to some function of A. And then we can solve it by using this equation, which we used in Charpitz method. So this equation will imply that dz is equals to a times dx because we supposed p is equals to a and then q of a times dy. So let's take some examples and we'll see that how to solve this type of equations. And it can be solved in two or three steps. It's a very easy method. So let's take an example. We are we are given with question number one, that is PQ plus P plus Q. So you can see that the function only consists of P and Q. There is no X, Y, and Z. So as mentioned in the method, we can say that P is equals to A. Now we can find Q in terms of P easily from equation number one. So we can say that equation number one implies that uh, P times Q plus one is equals to negative Q or uh, yes. And then we can substitute uh, this A in, uh, in the place of P. So this implies that Q plus one is equals to negative Q or A. This implies that or we can just write, don't need to divide here, just we can multiply. So it will be a q plus a. And then we can move this q onto left hand side. So it will be q common and a plus one inside the bracket will be equals to negative a. Then we can see that q will be equals to negative a divided by a plus one. So this is q. And what we said above that Q will be equals to some function of A and we can see that Q is equals to some function of A. So this is basically function of A, right? So now we can solve it directly. DZ is equals to PDX plus QDY. So now we can substitute A in terms of P and plus then negative a over a plus one times dy. 
So now these are separable equations and we can solve it directly and we can integrate these equations. So we're left with z is equals to ax minus ay divided by a plus one plus c. And this is the final answer. So you can see how easy these equations are and we will take some more problems. So it will give a good understanding. Let's say that we are given with a problem. We are given with a problem. The question says that P cube minus Q cube is equals to zero. So this is a very easy example. In fact, and you can see from the equation that simply we can write as P cube is equals to Q cube. So if we take cube root on both sides to cancel out this uh, cube, so this implies that one root will be P is equals to Q and there will be two more roots because it's, the, because it's a cubic equation, but we need only one root. So it's enough to find a root and we have found a root that is P is equals to Q. And we know that P is equals to A for these types of equations. So therefore Q will also be equals to A because P and Q are equal. So now we can write the general equation or we can say it as auxiliary equation so this is the auxiliary equation for the first type, right? So we are dealing with the first type. So it will be Z is equals to P is A. So it will be AX, Q is Y. So it will be AY plus C. So this is the solution. Right now we will take some more examples. Uh, let's say that we are given with p squared q is equals to one again it's a function of p and q so we can write as this implies that p is equals to a because it's a function of p and q only so we can assume the solution as p is equals to a then q will be equals to one over p squared that will be equals to one over a squared so now it's easy, we'll write the auxiliary equation because we found P and Q. So we can just insert the, these values here, A dx plus one over A squared dy. And now we can integrate these. So we will get Z is equals to AX plus Y over A squared plus C. So this is the answer for this question. So now you guys can see that how easy these problems are, how easy solutions are. So now this type one is almost clear to you guys. So we'll talk about type two. Type two, so type two is uh, saying that P, Q, Z. Now the function of P, Q, Z is equals to zero. In type one, we have function of P and Q only. And now in this type, Z also joins P and Q. So uh, the solution will be P is equals to AQ. Okay, so this will be the solution for this equation. So let's take an example. Uh, so then uh, when we uh, substitute P is equals to AQ and we will find P and Q in terms of A, then we will apply again the auxiliary equation. This auxiliary, auxiliary equation is useful in each type. This will be used in every type. And you know that this auxiliary equation we get from the Charpitz method. So, Let's say that we are given with a function z is equals to p squared plus q squared. Now you can see that this is a function of p, q, and z. So now we can say that we can assume that p is equals to a, q, and we can substitute uh, a, q instead of p in the equation. So equation number one implies z is equals to a squared q squared plus q squared 
this further implies that z is equals to a squared plus one times q squared so q squared will be equals to z over a squared plus one and this implies that q is equals to plus minus square root of z over a squared plus one okay so uh, this plus minus uh, indicates that these are two roots but we only need one root we can work out for one root only it's fine so now we can say that q is equals to square root of z over a squared plus one and now by back substitution we can find p also because we say that p is equals to a q so p will be equals to a times q q we already found that is z over a squared plus one in the square root so now almost the work is done and we just have to apply the auxiliary equation auxiliary equation is simple dz is equals to pdx plus qdy all right so we will apply the values of p and q dx plus z over a squared plus one it's a times uh sorry it's uh, this is only z over a squared plus one and this is a times so now we can take the square root of z and z common and we will shift onto the left hand side because the integral uh, that is a dz is on the left hand side and we want uh, to make uh, this compatible so that we can integrate so on the right hand side we will left with a squared plus one of the x plus one over a squared plus one half dy so now it's uh, integratable easily because the equation is separable and we separated the variables with their respective derivatives so uh, the integral of this will be negative two times z power half uh, in fact it will be positive two times okay so this will be equals to ax divided by a plus one sorry a square plus one half plus y divided by a square plus one half plus c so if we want to uh, simplify it further we can take a square on both sides okay so it will be 4z and this a square plus 1 a square plus 1 is common so if we we can write it like that ax plus y plus c over a square plus 1 half squared and i didn't write this a square plus one with c after taking lcm because this c is a constant and these are also constant a square plus one power half so it doesn't matter or you can just write c1 in place of uh, uh, this c times a square plus one half because it's an arbitrary constant so we can write it like that fine it's good okay so no need to confuse in that part now i can shift this to left side so i will get a square plus one and this half power with this square will be cancelled and on the right hand side i will be left with this function so i can write uh, explicitly in terms of z so i will write it like this right four times a squared plus one. So this is the implicit solution for Z and this is the answer. So now let's take another example for this type. Let's write it 
So it's P times one plus Q squared is equals to Q times Z minus A. Now we can see that uh, function is uh, function is consisting of only P, Q and Z. So we can directly write that P is equals to A, Q, right? So for every P, we will substitute A, Q. So it will be A, Q times one plus Q squared is equals to Q times Z minus A. This Q will cancel with this Q and this will be uh, one plus Q squared is equals to Z minus A over A. This implies that Q squared is equals to Z minus A divided by A minus one. All right. So Q will be equals to the square root of Z minus A minus A divided by A. So it's a uh, Fine, so it's Z minus two A over A into the square root. So this is Q, so now we can find P easily because P is equals to A times Q. So we can write P is equals to A times Q. Then we will substitute in the auxiliary equation and we'll find the solution so easily. Yes. These are very uh, easy problems. Uh, you just have to distinguish between the types and you can apply the rules. You just need to remember for what case, what rule should be applied, right? So you can write dz is equals to a times z minus two a over a power half dx and plus z minus 2a over a power half dy. So we can integrate this function, but not yet. Why? Because z minus 2a is on the right hand side. First of all, we have to shift this to the left hand side. So in order to make it compatible with its respective derivative, so let's do that. This will be dz divided by z minus 2a power half is equals to a over square root of a dx plus 1 over square root of a dy. Now we can integrate it easily. So for this, what we will get, we will get z minus 2 to a to the power half two times is equals to this a over root a can be written as root a x plus y plus c uh, square root of a. All right, uh, or uh, let's make it easy, simple, because uh, we need to square both sides and then it will be easy for us to work out now. Uh, I can take LCM on the right hand side. I just want to find Z explicitly. So I'm doing simplification. So I can write X plus Y plus C. Again, I'm writing it C or C1 because again, C times square root of A is a constant and an arbitrary constant. So it can be written as an arbitrary constant. It can be written as C, C1, C2 and uh, no problem with that. So now we can square both sides, right? So we'll get four times Z minus two A is equals to AX plus Y plus C one squared over A. Right, so now z minus 2a will be equals to ax plus y 
plus C1 whole square divided by A, uh, sorry, 4A. And then Z will be equals to AX plus Y plus C1 squared uh, over 4A minus 2A. So this is final answer. So we found Z explicitly in terms of X and Y. And this is the final answer. So these were the cases of type two. Now we'll talk about type three. So for type three, first of all, we will write the general form, general idea of type three. So type three is uh, also easy. In fact, uh, this is easier than the previous ones. So type three says that if a function that is given like this form that we can write it in this form separately, like the function of Q and Y on one side and function of X and P on one side, that you can also say it a separable form. So in this case, both uh, yes, f of x comma p is equals to g of y comma q, whatever the function is given will be equals to a. And the approach for the solution will be uh, started from here that f of x p, f of x p and g of y q is equals to a, right? And then we will apply the auxiliary form dz is equals to p dx plus q dy because then we will find uh, p and q from the respective equations and we can plug in this <coughs> auxiliary equation right so it's uh, easy nice and easy let's take an example for this type so the question says that y times p plus q times x or x times q plus pq is equals to zero. So you can see that this is a function of uh, x, y, p, and q. And now we, what we have to do is we have to make x, p, and y, q, pairs of x, p, and y, q, and we will separate. So how can we do that? We can see that uh, P, P and P is common in here. So we can write it as P times Y plus Q is equals to negative Q times X. This QX we shifted on the right hand side. So now we can easily separate these and we can write P over X is equals to negative Q over Y plus Q. So we can see that this is a function of P and X only, and this is a function of Q and Y only. So this is separated to this form, what we are talking about the type three. So now we can apply this rule that for F of X P and G of Y Q is equals to A. So we can write, this is equals to A. So we found that P is equals to uh, A X, right? So easily and negative, Q over Y plus Q is equals to A. So this will be equals to A Y plus A Q. And we will shift this Q to the right hand side. So it will be A Y plus A Q plus Q is equals to zero. This implies that A Y plus A plus one times Q is equals to zero, right? So we can found Q in terms of Y very easily. So A plus one times Q will be equals to negative AY. Then Q will be equals to negative AY divided by A plus one, right? So now we can use the auxiliary equation that is DZ is equals to PDX plus QDY quite easily. So dz will be equals to ax dx minus ay divided by a plus one dy. So these are separable and integratable. So we can integrate these easily. 
z will be equals to ax squared over 2 minus this will be equals to ay squared over 2 times a plus 1 plus c and we know we don't need to simplify it further because we already have the explicit form of z in terms of x and y so this is fine and this is the answer right so let's take another example that is question number two which says that q times x times one plus y squared is equals to p squared y so we can see that this is a form of p q x and y so we can separate it easily it's a separable form so it implies that q times one plus y squared divided by y is equals to p squared over x so this is separable so we can say that both are equals to a right so if both are equals to a then we can write it separately p squared is equals to ax which implies that p is equals to square root of ax right so quite easily you find p in terms of x and now we have to work out for q in terms of y so it's also easy because uh, we are given that q times one plus y square over y is equals to a so it's so simple just we have to cross multiply so we will get this q in front of y now we can put it into the auxiliary equation that is dz is p dx so p is square root of ax dx plus q dy so Q will be equals to AY over 1 plus Y squared dy, right? So now these are separable and integratable. So we'll integrate these. So Z will be equals to the square root of A times X to the power 3 over 2 uh, divided by 3 over 2 plus uh, it's one plus y square in the base and we have y in the numerator so we need two there so we'll divide it by two and then multiply it by two inside so you are familiar with this in these integrals it's not a difficult task to do right plus a over 2 and this will be natural log of 1 plus y square because the derivative of 1 plus y square is 2y and it's the it is in the denominator uh, yes it's in the denominator sorry numerator right so this is the explicit form of z in terms of x and y and we are done with it now we will discuss type 4 that is the easiest type that is also called Clairaut's form. Clairaut's form. And this is the easiest form, right? So, first of all, uh, we will see that uh, before discussing type 4, I just want to solve another problem for this type 3. It's an important problem. That's why I need to solve it. So, let's take a practice question as well let's say question number three is given not so difficult but it seems that it's an important question plus ln q so now this is also the function of p q x y right so we need to separate this so y p minus 2 x y is equals to ln q so y can be taken as common p minus 2x is equals to ln q this implies that p minus 2x is equals to ln q divided by y so we can see that it's separable so we can say is equals to a so p minus 2x is equals to a right and ln q over y is equals to a right so P is equals to 
a plus 2x where ln q is equals to a y and to remove this ln we can take e into the base on both sides so this ln will be cancel out this implies that q is equals to e to the power a y right so now we can write this into the auxiliary form so dz will be equals to a plus 2x dx plus e to the power a y dy z is equals to a x plus x squared plus e to the power a y over a plus c so this is explicitly z in terms of x and y so this is the final answer now we can jump to type 4 and clear outs form clear outs form so what actually is clear out form it's a special type of differential equation uh, partial differential equation of uh, order one and it's non-linear so the clear outs form is just z is equals to px plus qy plus function of pq now if you are given this type of equation right that p is multiplied by x plus q is multiplied by y and plus and some function of p and q that can be every function of any function of p and q like p square q square pq or pq uh, p plus q like that any function of pq right so the solution will be of the form z is equals to ax plus by plus function of ab right it's so easy we will take some examples and you can see that and we don't need to use auxiliary equation as well here right so question number one says that p minus q times z minus x p minus y q is equals to pq right so we can easily separate this by using by just taking this p minus q to the denominator on the right hand side so we can see that it's separated right so you can take this x p and y q to the right hand side x p plus y q plus p q over p minus q so this is the form we can compare with it the general form right so now we can write it directly that this is equals to z z is equals to ax plus b y plus instead of this pq we will write a b because it says in the general form that function of pq will be converted to function of a b right so this is the answer so simple uh, these are the easiest types right as i told you before so let's take another example z is equals to p x plus q y minus two times square root of p q so this is already separated and if you compare with the general form that is z is equals to p x plus q y plus function of p q so function of p q is nothing but it's square root of p q right so we can write it as a x plus b y minus two times square root of a b so this is the answer it's so simple right this is the answer so these were the four special forms of uh, first order nonlinear differential equations and uh, what we did we just generalize these forms and uh, then we separated into categories like we categorize into four types right so first category was that if you are given a function of only p and q then what we have to do 
what we need to do is we just uh, have to assume that P is equals to A and then we will find uh, Q in terms of P that will be a function of A, right? And then the next form was given as if a function of uh, Z, P and Q is given, right? And then the type three uh, was like, uh, if a function of XP is equals to function of uh, uh, YQ, right? And this clear out form that says that if uh, Z is equals to PX plus QY plus some function of PQ, right? So I uh, hope you guys uh, will understand these uh, methods, these types, these are very easy and simple and, you don't need to work hard for it. You just go through the lesson and uh, you will be like very familiar with this part and it's easy to remember, right? So hope you guys will enjoy watching this lesson. Thank you.